Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm really excited to show you this welding machine. It's a full featured TIG machine. It's the Prime Weld TIG 225X. Now the reason I'm so excited about this machine is when I got my first TIG welding machine, even though that was 10 years ago, it cost me about four times what this thing costs today. And if I could have gotten into it for that price, that'd be amazing. Now, the thing that I was not sure about is how would it perform? How would it stack up? Well, I gotta tell you, right up front, I'm pretty impressed, but we're gonna go through every single feature on this machine, try it out, and I'm gonna show you how it works. We'll evaluate it and look at how it compares with other machines that I've done. Now, I'm not gonna have the unboxing for you because I wanted to use this for a few days and take it for a few laps before I give you a review so I'd be able to give an educated opinion more than just running a couple of beads. But I would like to show you a few of the things that it comes with that I think stand out among welders in this price range. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the CK Worldwide Torch with the Super Flex Hose. And it's also a flex head torch that you can bend the top up and down like that to get in places that uh, might be difficult to reach. Now CK makes really nice torches. That's what I have bought for machines in the past. And this super flex cable is a big selling point for me. Let me show you why. So this is another torch that I have that's the same size. And the size is called a number 17. It's a pretty standard air-cooled or gas-cooled torch. And this one has the regular like rubber hose on it. And if you look, like if I just hold it loosely, it wants to flip kind of whatever way it goes. Where this one, it'll just follow wherever pretty effortlessly. And, and it may seem like, oh, that's not too big of a deal, but believe me, it's a big deal. It's super nice. If you were gonna upgrade to this and buy it yourself, it'd be $100 for the torch alone, plus the attached DINs adapter is another, I don't know, probably $40 there. So, um, great addition here. I also love that it comes in the actual CK box, so you know that you've got the real deal. The next thing I'll talk about is the foot pedal here, and that's really important, right? A lot of machines in this price range really skimp on the foot pedal. And, you know, you can run with about everything, but it's really nice that you can put your whole foot on here. And as I've used this over the last couple of days, I've noticed how well this grip tape on top works to keep my foot planted, and I can even scoot it around a little bit and just rock my foot forward and back and have really good control. So I'm happy with this pedal. It's a similar design to a lot of pedals that are out there and uh, definitely does the job very well. In addition to the foot pedal, they included a finger switch, which will be pretty handy for when you're not sitting at a bench, you're working around a vehicle and you want to be able to ignite your torch just using the push button instead of a foot pedal that might be awkward to reach. It comes with the adapter here uh, to plug it into 120 or 240 volts. Now your amperage output will be limited somewhat if you're running off 120 volts. Um, however, it's great to have that option if you just need to go and do a quick repair, help a buddy out in his garage, you don't have a 240 volt outlet, you'll be good to go. I'll be running mine on 240 volts for the majority of this demo, but we'll uh, plug it into 120 volts just to see how it does. Now let me jump back here for a second just to show you the regulator flow meter that hooks to your gas cylinder. It's included with this machine, and a lot of machines in this price range may not have it in there. So that's really nice, and I also like that it's the, the type that I like that has a floating ball so when gas flows, it'll show you what your actual flow rate is right there and you can adjust it here with this knob and really dial it in. So I think that's a nice addition that they put on there and included this uh, in here. It seems to be a really nice piece. As with most other TIG welders, this can be used with stick also, which just adds to the versatility, right? If you just want to go and do a job without taking your gas cylinder with you, or if you're doing a bunch of structural steel, you can run quite a bit faster running stick sometimes. So it's nice to have that option and they included a stinger to do it. One of the features I really liked on this machine is that the power connection and the gas are separate here. So that if I wanted to reverse and run the opposite polarity, which most of the time when you're TIG welding, you run with your torch on the negative pole and your ground on the positive pole if you're running DC. But once in a while, there are occasions that you'd want to reverse those and you can do it just by pulling out the cables here 
and switching them because they don't have the gas cable tied to the electric in the connection to the machine. So that's a really nice feature that they have as well. Okay, I had to zoom out a little bit to show you this last feature, but one thing that I really liked about the construction of this is the handle, right? A lot of machines just have a single handle you can grab with one hand. And while this machine is light enough, I can pick it up with one hand. If I'm carrying it very far, it's really nice to be able to use two. And I can just grab with two hands right on this handle and boom, pick it up like that, lift it up high into my truck bed, whatever I need to do. So I really like that. Um, very, very well thought out there. Now let's take a look at the control panel on this machine. There are a variety of knobs and we're gonna test out every single one. But the main difference between this and other machines I've run as far as the interface goes is that a lot of the settings you set by just turning the knob rather than uh, entering in a specific number. So in other machines I've used, you have to go through menus and for each of these different settings, you'll access the menu. And the thing that's nice about that is that you can enter a specific number and make sure that you get exactly the right setting every time. Now with this, you have to use some judgment and uh, you'll just have more or less an estimate. However, it has a real advantage if you just want to make a quick adjustment as you weld and especially as you're learning, you can take a look at all of these and just turn it a little bit up, a little bit down and dial in your process and understand what each of these parameters does. And another thing that's really nice is that none of them are hidden, so you can't forget about it very easily. You can just at a glance see where everything is, and there's a diagram here that might look a little confusing at first, but once you understand what these things are, there's a picture to show what each of these knobs does to the electrical signal coming out of the welder. And one other nice thing I liked about this, the way that you can have an at-a-glance approach, is that I found you can go ahead and just grab a photograph with your phone of all the settings. Once you have it set the way you want, I can take a picture of this, take a picture of the weld that I'm running, and then when I want to go back to running a similar weld to that, I can just pull up that picture and turn all the knobs right back to where they were and it'll be close enough to be able to get pretty much the same results. So I think there's pros and cons to having all of the knobs versus the numerical interface, but for a beginner, this is really nice. And also for me, I kind of like it. It's kind of like having the speedometer on your car uh, be a needle rather than a numerical readout because you can just get a look and see, okay, here's where it's all at really fast. Now, I've never mentioned the owner's manual before in a review, but this one is just so good that I need to. So it goes through with pictures and explanations of what every single adjustment does. And not only does it tell you what they are, but it'll walk through in plain English what you do uh, with it and which way you turn it and what effect that has. And then it also has a lot of good instructions. I mean, this is one of just the best summaries on TIG welding that I've seen. Usually these manuals are an afterthought, but they really uh, did a nice job at making this into something very useful um, here. Okay, well we're just about to do a whole ton of welding, but before we do, if you're new to TIG welding, it can be pretty intimidating. There's a lot of new terminology and things to learn. And to help out with this, I've put together a full video that shows all of the basics a beginner needs to know. Everything from machines, materials, technique, torches, it's all in there. So check that out linked in the description below after we finish up here. So I'm going to start out with some 60 thousandths of an inch aluminum or 16 gauge aluminum sheet and that's really the flagship so I'm turning it to alternating current which will switch between positive and negative on the torch. I have it set up for a foot pedal and I'll tune these knobs in at the top here because they control the alternating current waveform and how much of the time is positive and negative and how fast it switches. These other knobs I'll turn to zero, except the welding current here I'll set to 64 amps, which is a little higher than I'd need to run on this thin of material. However, I want to give myself a little extra room on the foot pedal and some options. Um, those end knobs will control flowing some argon before and after the weld. And I got a nice little tack there. And now I'm running right along and uh, running a bead here in the corner. And you can see the frosty edges there is the oxide or where the aluminum and oxygen have reacted on the aluminum. 
uh, just getting etched away by the alternating current and it's running along nice and smooth here let's take a look at it and the welder did a really good job but I was a little bit shaky and inconsistent on this one so I think I'm gonna try it just one more time and this time I'm running along just a little bit faster a little bit uh, further down on the pedal and you can see it's etching along doing a really nice job and then we'll take a look and see if I did a little bit better this time and taking a look it's uh, much better so nice and consistent ripples there on the top so this machine's uh, real control will run that thinner aluminum I'm gonna turn it up and show you a little trick here that you can do with the pulse on it and this is a way that a lot of people will run aluminum but I'm setting the pulse setting here and what pulse will do is it will turn the welding current higher and lower automatically and I'm going to use a low frequency pulse, which means it's going to pulse um, just barely a little more often than once per second. And then when it's not on, it'll back down and I have it set so it'll back down to about a third of the welding current. And you'll see it flash on and off here as I make my tack. And I can tack pretty much in the same way and just not worry about the pulse. Uh, there, so I don't need to turn that on and off to make my tack welds. Now I'm not using any filler metal to tack. This is a thicker aluminum. On the thinner aluminum, I did use filler metal because every once in a while it will get away from you and not fuse together. But on the thicker stuff, it's usually a pretty safe bet at a high enough amperage. So what I'm doing here is I'm just letting the torch melt away and roll over the corner on this material and give a nice outside corner joint with a stack of dimes and so this is a really simple way without any filler metal to make a weld and you can see I got a pretty good stack of dimes result but there are a few little pores a few little holes in there and the reason for that is that I was going just a little bit too fast without solidified so I just turned down my overall current and my frequency and I'll run a little slower here and that'll give a little bit of time for any gas to diffuse out so that I don't get those little holes in there and I'll run that and uh, this came out much nicer now I will give a word of warning that some aluminum alloys do need filler metal so you can't do this on any alloy of aluminum without cracking now I'm plugging it into a 120 volt outlet just to give it a try here and I have it set to about 100 amps running AC on aluminum and you can see it's running along pretty well here there is some limitation in overall amperage compared to 240 volts but it worked pretty well let's turn it way down I'm gonna set it right around 15 20 amps uh, to do a test on the low end running direct current and here I'm welding along on a razor blade and taking a look here it did a really nice job and that's a good indication of the control that you can get out of this machine so you look on the back side and it uh, ran all the way through but it didn't didn't melt back I was able to keep that control the whole way with a, a nice smooth arc on the machine so definitely passed that test now I'm gonna try a different feature with the pulse which is a high frequency pulse and so in this case, it'll do a similar thing to what we were doing on that aluminum coupon where it's going on and off, but it'll do it about 100 times per second. So as you're welding, you can't really even perceive the on and off that it's doing, but it does change the shape of the arc. So just for a baseline here, I'm running along a simple bead with regular direct current we'll take a look at these beads after and you'll be able to see a little bit of difference it'll be a little subtle but it is definitely a nice tool to have so I have a nice flat smooth bead and then here you can see it's kind of flashing on and off that's because the pulse uh, is aligning with the frame rate of the camera periodically and so that gives it a, a bit of a pulse there but um, as you run weld along you can't really see that and it just gives a more focused uh, arc here so we'll take a look at the results and be able to see just a subtle difference there in the top that's regular DC current and on the bottom with pulse you can see it's just a little bit narrower and I'd be willing to bet if you cut it apart it's even a little deeper because you're running a higher current without putting in overall heat because you're pulsing Let's try out the finger control here. So I've set it to four touch, which lets you use these other dials to set a program. So the start and end current there are set to half of the welding current, and the upslope and downslope control the time that it takes to get from the start to the current you run and then back to the end. So I'll press my button here, 
After a pre-flow, it starts on the low current, my start current, and then I release it, and it'll ramp up to my overall current. And I'm still running a pulse here, uh, the high frequency pulse we were running before, and I'll just feed some filler metal in. And this is a really nice feature to be able to set these programs, because if you're not using a foot pedal, one of the challenges, if all you have is an on-off switch, is when you get to the end of your plate, you've saturated so much heat in there, um, you kind of need to back off your current. And so as I get to the end of the run here, watch my finger, I'll press that button, and when I do, it'll ramp down to that lower current, and I can finish it off at the low current. It'll stay there until I release it. So there we go, we'll release it, and take a look at how this weld turned out. And it turned out really nice. I mean, it worked great, just like it did before with the pulse, and I had that control to taper off at the end. Now let's run a stick weld here. This is a 1 8th inch 7018 electrode, and I have it set to 140 amps, good and hot, and it's running really nice, right? So I'm getting a, a good result there. It's a little bit hotter than I would like, so I'm going to turn it down about 10 amps and run one more bead along here and it's just running nice and smooth so so no no issues there on running stick welds with it along here and we'll take a look at the end and see how they turned out here so i'm going to go ahead and chip some of the slag off there some of it already fell off i love when it just slides off like that nice smooth bead um, one reason to run uh these 7018 electrodes so give it a little uh clean off with the wire brush and we can take one last look and see how it turned out and uh, I'd say it's pretty nice. Okay, well we sure put this thing through its paces today. Hopefully you learned what you need to about what this thing can and can't do. I'm super impressed with this machine, that capability for the price. So if you want to check one out, go ahead and click the link in the description below. Also, check out the video that's linked down there that'll teach you everything that you need to know when you get started TIG welding. And if you want to up your game in welding and fabrication, go ahead and click that subscribe now and I'll keep sending videos your way. We'll see you next time.